prophet and declare the word that there be a sheep or flour, a sheep or bread sold in the dates of Samaria by this time tomorrow. And the, the man of God who leaned on his hand came to him and called that prophet a lie. And this is what we got today. You got many people don't expect the priesthood, they don't expect the bishophood, they don't expect the prophethood, but there are a lot of false prophets out there, according to the book of 1 John and 2 John. And the Bible said they have work today. So the devil is moving, but you got to have a spirit of discernment. And you got to know and understand that when you look at a dead situation, you don't know how you're going to come out, an illness or sickness is on your body. You got to believe that when the doctors done all they know how to do, when the financial institutions have done all they know how to do, and when you have done all that you know how to do, and you don't see no way, but I I heard the woman of God who's now going to heaven, Mary O. Ellis, say, God will make a way out of no way. Am I there? I hear my beautiful wife say that all the time. God is a God of the impossibility. You got to believe. Mark 9, 23 said, him that believeth all things. He didn't say some things are possible. He said all things. The word of God goes on and declares over in the second verse, he calls me to pass among and around about and behold, there were very many in the surface of the valley and lo, they were very dry. Notice what he says in another part of this John Gill expository. He says like this, and behold, they were very dry and open valley. It was many of them right there as a Jews or oh, as the Jews in the captivity and the will under under the Lord, meaning it was in that particular area under Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible declared that they saw many deaths of many of their people in a situation where God really had to deal with them on a spiritual level because of their rebelliousness. And they saw the very things that happened to the people because they went against the word of God. Now, one of the very verses says right here in this expository, he said, as the Jews were in captivity, and as they will be when they shall be converted and the number of Christians will be the spiritual reign of Christ. Notice what he says right here. And as the dead will be at the time and their resurrection, both of the just and the unjust. We talk about that in the book of Corinthians. The Bible talks about the double resurrection. Everybody's in holding right now. We talk about the book of Enoch, how he walked with God, but he was taken away. We talk about the process with Elijah and Elisha and how the process, how he was taken in the whirlwind of fire with the force of, with the Herod, uh, the, the chariot of uh, the horses from heaven and the fiery chariots thereof. We talk about the word of God with Moses because of what happened at the rock. He's forbidden to go in to the land of the promise and he asked God and God said say nothing to me about this no more and he told Moses to come on up to the mountain that he would receive the death that he would go on some people read about the story they say they don't know who got Moses body it was a devil it was the, the enemy or the angel whatever it was but you know when God tells you that you're getting ready to cease and he's going to send you on because of the way you did things and you wasn't to the point that you just was a negative person in all your life and sometimes people really know where you're going see when I, my mother passed from here I knew what she was going because I knew the lifestyle she lived sometimes you could check a person's credentials by the lifestyle they live and you know within the, you know without a shadow of doubt whether well, they're a real Christian whether well, they're what you call some people say fake Christians I don't know about all that stuff but People say it. It's just a cliche going around the body across of fake Christians. But I believe God gives everybody a chance. I believe God created people to be able to have a chance that they may have the right to the tree of life. And then in the word of God tells me in the book of Romans that we all have fallen short. We all have came to the point that in our lives we have we, have, we, have, we have came short of the glory of God and we all became unprofitable according to the word of God. If you read your Bibles properly, you go to the book of Romans, you look in chapter 3, you go down there, you look at verse 10, it tells you that we all have fallen short on some things. Matter of fact, he said, it is written, there is not one one right, not one in the book of Romans uh, chapter three and verse 10. He said, there are none that understand that there are, there are, there are none that understand that. Excuse me. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. Not one. He takes that thing and he goes on down. He begins to speak a little bit more. Don't want to get too far off into that. He says in the 12th verse, they have gone all out of the way. 
together they become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. And and this is what gets me. When we talk about the book of Matthew chapter 7, you know, we can go into a lot of things here because, you know, as a teacher in the ministry and a prophetic worker and a walker in the Christ of God and in the glory of God, I, I just sense the power of God as he just rolls things off my tongue, not for performance, not for accolades, but to know that it's accurate and what God is saying in the season which we're in. Some people just like the same things to say real good. They make people to make them they feel real good. But I know the power of God is yet moving in the season which we're in. And the word of God says that no weapon formed against us should prosper and nothing will be able to stand. We're going to have to believe that in this very life that we're living. We go back over to the book of Ezekiel. We look at Ezekiel chapter uh, chapter 3 uh, chapter 4 we say it again. He makes a repetitive work on himself. He said, and he said unto them prophesy unto these bones and say unto them and say unto look what he said prophesy unto these these bones and say unto them they oh say unto them oh ye dry bones hear the word of the lord now let me rearrange it again because the words put something in my spirit as i kind of hesitate there and i don't like where to hesitate if the lord hits me with something right in the middle of the meat of a sentence he's downloading something fresh off the press that means it's coming straight from the kingdom to speak to these lips of clay because i am his servant look what he says again once again let's look at the third verse first and let's go back to the fourth verse but let's look at the third one again and he said unto me son of man can these bones live look what he said it's a question mark then in king james version go to the amplifier version he said and he said to me son of man can these bones live and i answered oh god you know now let's go back to the king james version the same thing and he said to me son of man can these bones live and i answered oh lord you know when a prophet understands what God has spoken to him, got the power to come to fruition. He will not doubt the word of God. Look over here in what we call the children's uh, CIB Bible. He says in the third verse, in that very same sentence, he says once again in, in that children's Bible, he said, then he asked me, human being. Sometimes as humans, we got a problem with believing what the word of God can do because we're so busy looking at the physical rather than the spiritual. We look at things as impossible. God says he's got a home for you. God says he's got a, 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 a husband for you. He's got a wife for you. God said your finances can come. He can supernaturally bring things to your account supernaturally. But some men don't believe that. Some women don't believe that. That we say sometimes we got a shortage of men in the world. We got a shortage of women in the world. There's no more good women. And some people say that the sickness and disease and the things that go around the world that people can't find cure from. Some of these things that we see in the body of people are just afflicted for God to be able to take care of them and bring them out. It brings about the story in the book of Luke when God, uh, when Jesus Christ was God in the flesh he came about and he was in this particular synagogue where this woman began to work and as this woman was working she had this curvature in her spine and the word of God declares decrees in that particular scripture in the verse if I find that I want you guys to really catch that because the Lord dropped it in my spirit and I want to make sure I'm going to give you some accuracy on that and it talks about the woman who had the curvature in her spine and the word of God declared that he spoke a word on the woman of God and he caused her spine to straighten out let me, let me, look, let me look at something here because I I want to look at that as we continue to flow. We got a little time here. We want to make sure we get an accuracy in the scriptures and knowing what we're saying here. And it talks about the woman who had a curvature of her spine. Some of you might already know the scripture. That's great. But let's stay attention to hear what the word of God says in terms of what the minister is speaking on this afternoon. Um, and the word of God is said that she had. I'm going to look at this carefully. It says she had a curve. Hmm. In her spine. And it says... Hmm. Now this just came to me fresh. The Holy Spirit just dropped this on me. And I think I need to just bring this to you and just really tell you how the power of God can work. Hmm. You guys just bear with me. I'm always going to show something to you fresh off the press. If God gives it to me, I'm going to speak it to you. The woman of God who had a curve. Let me see what I said. I'm trying to look for that. Hmm. 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 I think it's over here. I'm gonna look at it right here. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a note. And look at something right here. Uh, I'm gonna type. I'm gonna. I'm gonna type something. I'm looking about. I'm gonna type something in. 
I'm going to type something that kind of helped me out and move along here a little bit. I know it's in the Bible. I know it's in the book of Luke. But I'm going to give you a specific scripture on that particular uh, verse of scripture. And matter of fact, it, it talks about over here in um, the book of Luke. Let's look at Luke chapter 13. And let's just move over there right quick. The Bible says she was a crippled woman. She was crippled. And the word of God declares when we look over here, let's go there for a minute. Just kind of, you know, tailing off what we're speaking over here in the area of uh, the book of uh, Ezekiel 37. Want to get some clarity. I always want to get some clarity in scripture. The Bible said that there was a teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. Now, this is amazing because some people talk about the seventh day and the Sabbath and all that, how to keep it holy, which is true. But if the, the word of God also speaks in the scripture uh, very uh, uh, closely about, you know, if one of you had an ass and you would actually take that ass loose it from his barns to take it out to water it or if one of your oxen or someone fell in a ditch would you not go out and loose him so God is speaking in that particular scripture about in the area uh, why can't God do his work on the Sabbath we know the Sabbath day is holy we understand it but it's still miracles that can be done you can still do the work of the kingdom on the Sabbath we do it every Sunday don't we we come to church we do what we're supposed to do in the house of God we're still yet working we're not the physical job you know, the word of God does tell us about the man of work, he don't eat, but also does a work of the kingdom. So when we look at the word of God, let's not get too tangled up in the Sabbath thing, because God yet still does work in the kingdom of God, regardless of what day it is. If you got to be healed on the Sunday, God's going to heal you on the Sunday. If somebody came into the hospital, you was having a sickness, disease in your body, and the word of God declared and decreed that it should be done through you, that which is in heaven, and by his name, then they say you'll be loosed, and you'll be loosed. But the word of God says over here in the book of Luke, chapter 13, and at the 10th verse to the 17th verse, and the woman was, that was, he said, and it was teaching in the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, that was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Now, this is amazing when you're talking about trying to deliver somebody from something that's going on in their life, whether it be on the Sabbath, whether it be on a Wednesday or Thursday, whatever it may be. God is still able to deliver you for whatever it may be. Now, we're going to we're gonna lose out on the book of the book of Ezekiel, but we want to go through this clearly and let's get some real good understanding about it. There was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. Now, God has given you the power to speak to the infirmity because all these demonic things sickness and illness that's of the devil that's all of the devil it's not designed for it to be in your body because God said you are the temple of the Holy Spirit the Bible said you got to believe that greater the he that is in you than he that in the world am I there with somebody on tonight I'm trying to get you to see what the power of God has in store for you in this 2017 season he said a woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and then she was bowed uh, she was bowed or she was bent over together and there he could in no wise lift up now this woman they said she was bowed over together and could in no wise lift no matter how much she tried because of the condition of her body if a medical person saw somebody they're just going to be like that for life you know some people just ready to give up on you right then and there well, they got a headache problem. They got this going on. And we just got to go to the doctor to believe the doctor's going to heal. Like, well, you know, we got to believe in Dr. Jesus. This is why you got to get away from our carnal minded people. You got to believe that God can heal you from whatever infirmity that is in your life. The Bible says, if I be lifted up, if he's going to gather all men onto you, he will gather people to you in such a way to have the power of the spirit to pray for whatever condition is going on in your body. They can believe you. The word of God says, if anyone is sick among you, call for the what? The elders in the church. We're supposed to be men of God, walking up right the best way they can, not being perfect. Nobody's perfect. To help you in the condition that you're in, that you get a prayer through Christ, a prayer to God that will save you from the condition you was in. The word of God goes on and says over the 12th verse of Luke 13, he says, and, the, and then Jesus saw her and he called her to him and he said, woman, thou art loose. Just on the words. Think about what Jesus is saying. He didn't have to lay hands on her or anything. They said, woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. Just speak the word like the centurion soldier. Believe and declare and decree the word of God. The evils were going out to the 13th verse and he laid hands on her and immediately. Am I there? That speaks about the word over in the book of Psalms 46. The Bible says he's a very present help in a very present time of need. God said he's a nano God according to the book of Mark 9 and 23 you're going to have to believe that when God said he's going to do saying he's going to do it he said he's not a God that he shall lie 
He's not a son of any man upon the piece of a flush that he's had to repent. The command is given and God will do what he says he's going to do. Now that's according to the arrow. So if you want to look for scripture reference over in the old Testament in the area of numbers 23, 19 to 21, he says once again in the 13th verse in the book of Luke, and he says over in Luke 13, he says in, he laid hands on her and immediately she was made straight. She was made straight and glorified God. But I want you to go back and look at the very, um, the 12th verse once again, because it's, it's not controversial, but it shows how God really, in a way, how he did the man who was blind Barnabas, how he healed him in two stages. When he first spit on his eyes, he told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, and he asked him, what did he see? And the man said, I see man as trees. No, he said, you ain't seeing right. Let me hit you again. And then he asked,